Warframe has a metric ton of different activities for you to do, all with their different challenges and rewards. That's why in this Warframe guide, we're gonna go over the most important daily and weekly tasks that you should not miss out on if you wanna get tons of highly important resources and upgrade materials. So after a massive thank you to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on, let's jump right into it. Now, before we go into the details, one big disclaimer here. What we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna be quite a lot if you really try to do every single one of these activities. Of course, I do not expect you to play everything and neither can do the developers. So all this video here aims to do is show you what there is to do so you can pick for yourself what you think is gonna be more important and then make your choices accordingly. But with that being said, Let's begin. Starting out with our list, and of course the first thing you preferably want to do is to log in. I know, right, Captain Obvious? But let's be real here for a second, because logging in actually gives you a daily login bonus with specifically great items at certain milestones. So even if you don't have time to actually play, simply fire up the game, log in, and then log out again. Future you is gonna thank you. But if you actually have some time to spend in the game after logging in, then the next thing you want to do is go over to your syndicate console and look out for syndicates that you still have standing to gain for. I know I'm a bit guilty of this myself, because I'm kinda lazy in that regard, but you should not be. Because what I mean is, if you have a syndicate where you can still gain standing, then what you want to do is switch over to that syndicate, make it active, so everything you do in your play session from now on will go towards your standing with that syndicate automatically without you having to do anything specific. So by just looking at your syndicate overview, you can already make adjustments to maximize your syndicate standing and get more rewards for that in the long run. But before we jump into our first mission of the day, there's still more to do in our orbiter, so what we do next for the next point on the list is we walk over to the foundry. I don't know about you, but I usually have something in there which is always in the works, and once it's done, I take it out and restart it or start something else instead. Things like this, for example, would be Forma that take 24 hours to craft, or something like Field Run, Detonite Ampoles, Mutagen Masses, the resources that you need to craft your dojo weapons. So long story short, after logging in, definitely check your foundry and see if there's something that needs to be restarted. My personal pro tip on the side here would be to install the official Warframe Companion app on your phone because what this allows you to do is use the app to actually take things out of your foundry and restart the production. You don't even have to log in the game itself in order to do that. Really great app. Everybody who's serious about Warframe should have that on their phone. But let's actually start talking about playing the game and not just standing around in our command center, shall we? All right, so the first mission you wanna play in the game matters a lot if you're still a new player. Here's what I mean. Your first mission of the day that you complete always gives you a double credit reward. So whichever credits you gain in that mission will actually be doubled for you in the payout. So when you're still pretty fresh in the game, then two things are true. First, you're in desperate need of credits. And second, you don't have a really optimized way of farming credits unlocked yet. If you're in that spot, then the first mission of the day is insanely important for you. And this is what you actually want to do in this case. Go into your star chart and play the highest level Dark Sector mission that you have currently unlocked as your first mission of the day. Dark Sector missions are those that are against the infested and have this little funky symbol on their note in the star map, and they also have some percentage multipliers for resources and experience or whatever in their mission description. That's how you can identify them. The reason you want to do these Dark Sector missions is because they pay you out, by default, 15 to 25,000 credits for completion and they just take 5 minutes or so. Meaning, if you do them as your first mission of the day, you will get the double credit payout, meaning 30 to 50,000 credits just for playing a 5 minute mission. And if you do that every day, you will see that over the course of 1, 2, 3 weeks, you will accumulate quite some wealth in credits, so you're not even running low. But of course, once you've unlocked the index and you can actually run that yourself, you don't need to do this step anymore because your credits are gonna start coming from there. 
So after you've made your money, the next thing on your daily checklist would be to check out your Night Wave daily missions. As we all know, in the Night Wave, every week you get certain tasks that give you 4,500 or 7,000 Night Wave XP respectively, and in addition, every day you get three tasks that give you 1,000 Night Wave XP each. So every day what you're gonna do is you check out what these tasks are and if you can do them easily. If they can be incorporated in your daily routine anyway, then make sure that you do them. But, and that's important, for a thousand Nightwave XP, I would argue it's not worth going out of your way simply to get that. So if it says catch three fish and you really didn't want to go fishing today, then simply skip that. One thing that is worth it though, especially if you play a lot of Daviri, is checking the daily offers of the Daviri specific vendor, Acrythes. She can be found either in your dormy zone or in various locations of the Viri, and the special thing about her is that she has different offers that are changing on a daily basis. And the most interesting things among these offers are of course going to be her arcanes. And believe me when I say, some of these Daviri arcanes are actually super strong and you want to have them. So what you want to do every day is check which ones she offers today and if you like them and if you need them, then go and buy them. But up next, we're gonna go into the higher level rewards, which would be making your daily sortie. If you finish the War Within quest, you will have unlocked your daily sortie, which is a three mission series with increasing levels. After you've finished all three of them, you will get one out of many sortie rewards. So if you actually manage to do your sortie every single day, you can roughly expect to get two random ribbons every single week and some nice other stuff like Kuva, Endo or boosters at the same time. One other thing that's going to build up over time is your standing not with the regular six syndicates, but with the open world factions. As you know, the Plains of Eidolon, the Orvelis, or the Cambian Drift have their own faction where you need to increase your rank in order to unlock more stuff that you can get there. And sooner or later, you want to be max rank with all of them. But as we also know, your daily standing that you can gain with them is limited by your mastery rank, so you cannot infinitely farm them every day. So naturally what you want to do is increase your daily standing as much as you can so you get up to the higher ranks faster. And I know you're gonna say, Blackie, I don't have time to play I don't know how many bounties every day in all three open worlds just to max out the standing, and I totally get that. I'm not saying you should do the bounties, but there are other ways in which you can increase your standing, which might even be a bit faster. In the Plains of Eidolon, for example, that would be fishing. If you catch some high value fish and you exchange them for standing with the Ostron, that's gonna get you up pretty nicely. Infortuna is gonna be mining ores, and in the Necrolisk, it's, yeah, well, it's actually doing the bounties there. That's gonna get you up the fastest, but the bounty rewards at least are pretty nice. So what that means is, whenever you feel like it, you go fishing in the Plains of Eidolon for a long time, accumulate a lot of fish, and then every day, over time, as long as you have fish, you go to the Ostron, exchange as much as you can until you max out your daily standing, and that's it. You don't need to actively play these missions every day. Oh yeah, and by the way, that also goes for the secondary open world factions like the Quills, Voxelaris, and Necroloid, as well as also for the Zeraman and Zero. You get what I'm saying, just get the items that you need to exchange for standing and then every day visit them as long as you have items in the bank and exchange them to get your daily standing. Which already brings us to the next point of things that are daily capped and that would be focus. If you're currently working on increasing the skills of your operator slash drifter, then what you're gonna need is focus to level up your focus trees. Now, I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty details on how the focus system actually works in this video because it would simply blow it up too much, but I have something planned in the near future, so if you don't wanna miss out on that, you might wanna think about leaving the channel a sub so you don't miss it day one. Welcome to the crew. But as I just said, if you're working on increasing the skills of your operator, you're gonna need a lot of focus points. And while there are multiple ways to get them, the easiest way is to simply max out your daily focus cap, which I personally would recommend to do in the Sanctuary Onslaught with a certain Volt, Seren, Equinox, Gauss or whatever AoE damage dealer you're comfortable with and run that whole thing to max out your focus as quickly as possible. 
And if you do that every single day over the period of one or two weeks, you're gonna have your focus trees maxed out in no time. Which leaves us with only one more daily activity that you could pursue, and that would be steel path incursions. Now, these of course only show up if you have steel path unlocked, which means you have to have finished every single mission on the star chart. But if you have it and you have some more time to spare in your daily session, then I strongly suggest you do those incursions. These are also showing up in the tab in your star map. And the great thing about them is that they pay out extra steel essence if you finish them. So you can step up your steel essence game and go shop with Teshin from it. But speaking of weeks, let's now talk about the activities that you cannot do every day, but rather every week, because there are also some very important ones in this list. First off, I usually upload a video once per week. So if you like them and you could spare like to help them spread to more people, that would be a weekly routine making me very happy. Cheers for your support. But back to topic. One thing that you want to make sure you do every week is again the night wave, just this time, not the daily night wave missions, but your actual weeklies that give you 4.500 or 7,000. Now, important to note here is that you do not need to do all of these missions every single week. To max out your night wave progress to level 30 at the end of the night wave season, it's perfectly enough if you do like two thirds or something of the missions over the course of that time and you're gonna be there no problem. Even if you don't make it to level 30 by the end of the season, you're still gonna unlock some levels, which is no problem because the best rewards of the night wave are usually to be found in the very early levels anyway. The next thing you want to do every week, no matter if you're an early game player or a 5,000 hour veteran, is do your daily Ayatan treasure hunt with Maru. As soon as you unlock Maru's Bazaar on Mars, you can talk to Maru once every week and she will send you to a either Orokin or Derelict tile set where you will find a guaranteed Ayatan statue. If you've never done one of these missions, Chances are you might need some practice runs to make it into the vault in time, but actually it's really no big deal once you memorize them. And even though you might think, well, it's just one Ayatan statue, that is one free Ayatan statue worth multiple thousands of endo that you can get every week and it's only gonna take you like two minutes to do so. However, the next point on our list is gonna be something that is not as beginner friendly because this is your weekly Archon Hunt. Once you finish the new war quest, of course, you unlock the Archon Hunt, which is basically like a sortie, just that you cannot do it once a day, but only once a week, and at the end you fight one of the three Archons. I don't want to waste too much time on them right now, because I kinda sorta already did a video on Archon Hunts back in the day when I talked about the Archon Shards when they were first introduced to the game, so once you've unlocked them, you probably already know how they work and that you can get an Archon Shard out of them and that Archon Shards are super strong and if you don't know anything about it, go check out my Archon Shard guide first. But what it boils down to mainly is, yeah, play your weekly Archon Hunt. It's gonna take you like 30 minutes and you're gonna get an Archon Shard. And speaking of Archon Shards, there's a second way to get a second Archon Shard every week and that is your Carl's Garrison mission. This one is also available once per week and if you wanna get the Archon Shard from this, then all you need to do is do the mission and successfully tick off all the side objectives that you have in the mission, except maybe one, there is like a bit of leeway that you have there. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is, those calls Garrison missions are so tedious over time that I stopped doing them a long time ago. And probably you will feel about them the same way. And what's even worse, they can only give you a normal Archon Shard, no Tau Forged. So if your time budget is a bit tight, then you might wanna think about dropping these and only doing them on the occasion. The next point on our weekly list is something that has to do with Rivens and Kuva, so I'm just gonna sum it up in one single point. And that is all the vendors in the game from which you can get either Rivens or Kuva in exchange for certain resources. Those would be Paladino in Iron Wake, which you unlock after the Chains of Hero quest, Archimedean Yonta on the Zeraman 10 Zero, and Teshin. From all of these, you can buy Kuva and or Rivens on a weekly basis for different resources. I don't want to go into detail about this right now here in this video because I already talked extensively about this in my Kuva guide that I released like, what, two weeks ago? So if you want to learn more, go check out that afterwards. And the next big thing on our list is going to be the Daviri Circuit. 
And about the circuit, I can only say, if this week's circuit, no matter if normal or steel path, has something that you actually need, you want to do that this week. However, if it's something that you don't think you require right now, then those offerings will return over time. So don't be afraid you're gonna miss out something, it's going to come back. Now, the circuit, no matter if the normal or the steel path version, can be a bit time intense to actually farm. So if you don't wanna do everything in one go and rather spread it over multiple days of the week, what you need to do for normal circuit in order to get to the max level is to only do four rounds every single day of the week. For the steel path circuit, it would be six rounds per day because that takes a bit more standing to max out. However, if you wanna be as efficient as possible, it would be best to stay in as long as you can because only from round five on will you gain the maximum standing of 170 per round, so it's more efficient to do longer runs of the circuit. I'd say, look at your weekly schedule of what you have to do and how much time you have to actually play and then decide if you wanna go one long run or spread it out over multiple days. And finally, there is one more thing on the list, and I kinda sorta put it in the weekly section of the video, but actually it's a bi-weekly thing that only happens every second week, and that would be, of course, our beloved Void Trader Barrow Barrow appears on one of the relays in the game, which is selected randomly, every second weekend from Friday till Sunday and sells you various amazing wares like Prime Mods, certain weapons, certain cosmetics and much more. In order to buy his offers, you're gonna need ducats, which is a currency that you obtain by selling your unneeded Prime stuff to that vending machine, which you also find in the same relay room. And then you can go on a big shopping spree. As you might have noticed, we talked a lot about Deviri in this video. Because Deviri is actually super important to gain awesome items fast without even requiring you to have a good loadout in the first place. So to step up your Deviri game, you definitely should not miss my ultimate Deviri guide right here. Another massive shout out also to Akimbo Fade, Niels V, Lamies, and all other channel members for your support. If you too want to support what I do, then you can use the join button down below. We see each other, hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.